Hello, everyone. My name is Tian Shiji. Welcome to attend our paper presentation, Robust Fingerprinting of Genomic Databases. This is the collaborative work with Erman Ade, Emery Lamas, and Pan Li. We are from Case Western Reserve University, Bear Kenton University, and the University of Houston downtown. Here is the outline for the talk. First, I will show the background and the importance of sharing genomic databases under liability guarantees. And then I will briefly introduce some of the related works on database fingerprinting. And next, I will talk about our developer scheme for genomic database fingerprinting and how to make it robust against correlation attacks. And finally, I will show some experimental results, draw the conclusion, and point out some future works. Genomic database sharing is critical to biomedical research, clinical practice, and customized health care. However, the sharing of a genomic database is usually not viable due to the copyright and intellectual property concerns from the database owner. In other words, the, the requirement of copyright protection and anti-piracy may prevent the database owners from sharing their genomic database. The steganography technique of database fingerprinting can be used to claim the copyright of the database owner, prevent illegal redistribution of the database, and identify the source of data breaches. Database fingerprinting schemes achieve copyright protection by inserting imperceptible customized marks into the shared databases. And the fingerprinting insertion process is achieved by randomly changing selected entries of the databases. However, existing database fingerprinting schemes usually only focus on the numerical entries like floating points, so they cannot be directly applied to protect the copyright of genomic data because they usually have very limited state. For example, uh, four state if we consider AGCT and three state if we consider a single nucleotide of polymorphism. Additionally, the existing fingerprinting schemes for databases also ignore the potential data correlations of genomic data, which are usually caused by Mendel's law kinship and the linkage disequilibrium. If there is a genomic data leakage, then it will often end up being sold or publicly available on the internet. So it is important to develop a database fingerprinting schemes specifically for the genomic data in order to protect its copyright and prevent illegal redistribution. And as shown in our previous work, an attacker can easily detect and distort the fingerprint by just taking advantage of the data correlations. As a result, it is also important to make the genomic database fingerprinting scheme be robust against the correlation attacks. Digital fingerprinting schemes are originally developed for multimedia, for example, the video, text, and audios. The seminal work of database fingerprinting is proposed by Agri et al. in 2003. Then there are some follow-up works. For example, Liu et al. proposed to develop a database into different blocks and then ensure certain bit of data at certain blocks will be marked by specific values. And then Li et al. enable the insertion or extraction of arbitrary fingerprint mark from databases. Recently, there have also been some attempts to study the fingerprinting or watermarking of individuals' genomic sequence. They also consider the correlations of uh, genomic data and uh, study the privacy protection when sharing your genomic data. However, this work only focuses on the fingerprinting of individuals' genomic sequence, but here in this work, we consider the copyright protection of a collection of individuals' genomic data. Now we will talk about the first fingerprinting schemes that is developed specifically for genomic data. First, let's check out the genomic fingerprinting system. In the system, there is a database owner who has a database, which is a collection of genomic data belonging to different individuals. 
and the database owner want to share its database to different uh, service providers in order to receive some uh, services like customized health care or clinical practice. When sharing its database to a specific service provider, he will insert a fingerprint, which is a binary mark bit that is customized specifically for the service provider. And the fingerprint will cause the original database to be modified at different locations. As a result, each service provider will receive a unique copy of the database. So if there is a malicious service provider who unauthorizedly redistributed his received fingerprint copy, then the database owner can still identify him for the uh, data leakage by extracting the fingerprint bit that is customized specifically for this malicious service provider. Here is an example of genomic databases containing SNPs of different individuals, where each row is a SNP sequence of a specific person. We represent the value of each SNP by the number of its minor alleles, so it can only take the value 0, 1, or 2. The inserted fingerprint will change the SNP value at different locations of the genomic database. And the fingerprint is customized for each service provider. In particular, it is the hash value of the concatenation of the private key of the database owner and the serial number of the service provider. For example, um, when sharing the original genomic database to the service provider IJK using their different fingerprint bits, it will lead to different locations being modified of the original database, and the modified locations are represented in the yellow dots. To be more specific, let RIP be the piece SNP of individual I in the genomic database, and FL is the else bit of the fingerprint bit string. Let X be a random binary bit, and M is the result of the exclusive operation between X and FL. So the fingerprint insertion is completed by setting the T's to the last bit of IIP to our mark bit M. And in the fingerprinting scheme, the collection of I, P, L, and X are all randomly generated. And the random seed is said to be the concatenation of the private key of the database owner and the primary key of the data record. Please refer to the paper for the detailed procedure of fingerprinting insertion. And the fingerprinting extraction is the reverse process of the insertion procedure. Genomic data has very rich correlation, as shown in the figure on the right. In the paper, we use S to represent the row-wise correlation between genomic data. And in particular, it can be caused by the Mendel's law and the similarities of genomes from family members. And we use J to represent the column-wise correlations in the genomic data. In the paper, we characterize J as a pairwise joint distribution between the genomic data points at different locations. Since the previously mentioned vanilla fingerprinting scheme randomly changes the entries of the genomic database, it will compromise both row-wise and column-wise correlations and cause a significant statistical utility loss in the resulted fingerprinted database. As a result, the attacker can take advantage of the correlations to infer and distort the inserted fingerprint and compromise the vanilla scheme. As a result, we need to improve the previously developed vanilla fingerprinting scheme for genomic data to make it also robust against the correlation attacks. To make the vanilla scheme be robust against the correlation attacks that take advantage of the row-wise and column-wise correlation among genomic data, we develop the corresponding mitigation technique. And this technique can serve as post-processing steps for the vanilla scheme to mitigate against the row-wise and column-wise correlation attack. 
in particular the role wise medication technique modifies the SNP tuples that are violating the Mendes law and at the same time reduce the discrepancy of SNP similarities that are caused by the vanilla fingerprinting insertion. And similarly, the column wise medication technique also reduces the discrepancy of SNP joint distributions caused by the inserting of vanilla fingerprint. To be more specific, the role wise mitigation technique contains two phases. In the first phase, the database owner will modify the SNP tuple that violates Manda's law. Take a violation instance of mother father child tuple. And uh, suppose the mother's SNP is changed due to fingerprint. And after fingerprint insertion, this tuple becomes 2, 1, and 0. This is a violation of Mendel's law because if a mother has two minor allele and a father has one, then it is impossible for their child to have zero minor allele. So to make this tuple satisfy the Mendel's law, the database owner will update the child's SNP from zero to one. And in the second phase, the database owner will reduce the discrepancy of the SNP similarities caused due to the vanilla fingerprint insertion. And this is achieved by solving a minimization problem. And the objective function is try to minimize the cumulative discrepancy between family members before and after fingerprint insertion. And we use R double tilde to denote the value after this modification, after fingerprinting. And the SIJ double tilde family determines, uh, represents the new similarities of the pairwise family members. And the police refer to the paper on how we solve this optimization problem. The design idea of the column-wise medication technique is try to make the marginal distribution of the fingerprinted SNP close to the original marginal distribution of that SNP. And the original marginal distribution can be achieved by the marginalization of the reference joint distribution J, which is publicly available. For example, let the probability of CP tilde denote the marginal distribution of the SNP at location P after the vanilla fingerprinting insertion, and the probability CP be the reference or the ground truth marginal distribution of that SNP at the locus P. Then the column wise mitigation technique will try to change some entries in the vanilla fingerprinted database to make the marked marginal distribution be close to the original distribution by solving this minimization problem. And uh, the decision parameter in this optimization problem is a new joint distribution, J, P, tilde, and P. And uh, it is in the space where the marginal distribution or the marginalization of these 2D matrices is identical to the marginal distribution of CP tilde and CP. And uh, in this optimization problem, we introduce a regularization term which controls the entropy of this um, decision parameter. And after solving uh, this object function, we will change some fraction of the fingerprinted genomic databases based on the optimal value of our decision parameter. Now we will talk about some experimental results. In the experiment, we consider a genomic database containing 1,500 individuals. Each of them has 156 SNPs. Among this population, there are 150 families represented as the mother, father, child, and tuple. In the paper, we also evaluated the fingerprint robustness against the random bit flipping attack and the correlation attack. The random bit flipping attack is a common attack that randomly change some entries of the received fingerprint 
database. And uh, we use two uh, metrics to evaluate the utility of the fingerprinted database. The first is the accuracy of the database. The second is the consistency of the top 50 SNPs that have strong association with the phenotype before and after fingerprint insertion. And uh, the association of the SNP and the phenotype is measured in terms of the p-value with 95% confidence interval. In this work, we consider attack is successful if the attacker can compromise more than 50% of the fingerprint bits. And to the advantage of the attacker, we assume it has the ground truth of the row-wise and the column-wise correlation, S and J. In the first experiment, we show the vulnerability of the vanilla fingerprinting scheme against the correlation attack. In particular, we vary gamma R and gamma L, which is the row-wise and column-wise fingerprint density in our scheme, from 5% to 10% with 1% increment. And after inserting the vanilla fingerprint using different combinations of gamma R and gamma L, we subject the fingerprinted database to the row-wise and column-wise correlation attack, and then scatter the accuracy loss versus the compromised fingerprint bits in blue dots in the figure on the right. And uh, the green line in the figure represents the attack success boundary, and if the point is above this line, it means uh, this attack has successfully compromised more than half of the fingerprint bits. And from the figure, we can see that for most of the correlation attack, it can successfully compromise the vanilla fingerprinting scheme. In the second experiment, we subject the vanilla fingerprinted database to the random bit flipping attack. And here, we vary gamma R and gamma L together from 5% to 10% with 1% increment. And after inserting the vanilla fingerprint, we were randomly flipping 5%, 7%, up to 15% entries in the vanilla fingerprinted databases. And then we scatter the accuracy loss versus the compromised fingerprint bits in black dots in the figure on the right. And clearly, if the attacker use random bit flipping attack, then for most of the cases, it cannot success. In other words, it can not compromise more than half of the fingerprint bits in the fingerprinted database, which suggests that the correlation attack are much more powerful than the random bit flipping attack. In the third experiment, we show that we can effectively mitigate the correlation attack by using our proposed mitigation technique. Similarly, we still vary gamma R and gamma L from 5% to 10%. But after inserting the vanilla fingerprint, we will also post-process the database using our proposed row-wise and column-wise mitigation technique. And then we will subject the post-processed database to the row-wise and column-wise correlation attack. And finally, we also scatter the accuracy loss versus the compromised fingerprint bits in the red dots in the figure on the right. Clearly, for most of the cases, we can successfully defend against the correlation attack, even though the attacker modifies significantly more entries in the fingerprinted dataset. In the fourth experiment, we show the consistency of the SNP and FNE type association in this table. And the takeaway message of this slide is that our proposed Vanilla fingerprinting scheme plus the mitigation technique can preserve high consistency of the association. However, if the robust fingerprinted database is subjected to the correlation attack, then the consistency will have a significant drop. Here is the conclusion for our talk. In this paper, we have proposed the first fingerprinting scheme for genomic database and also make it robust against the correlation attack. In the future, we will develop privacy-preserving genomic database fingerprinting schemes and also make it robust against the collusion attack. And we would like to thank the funding agencies that supported this research. And finally, our data and implementation 
is available on GitHub. Thank you.